You're watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, we'll find out how to tackle the spread of cross-border diseases in Africa. As always, you can join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Beyond Markets. And you can follow my Twitter handle too at Esther O. Awuni. Now, informal cross-border trade in the Southern African Development Community, while an important source of livelihood for populations, can also contribute to the spread of infectious diseases. Chiwenwe Chadimba, the Principal Program Officer for the New Partnership for Africa's Development, joins me from Johannesburg to discuss how the organization is working to tackle cross-border diseases. Now, Chiwenwe, thank you for taking the time out to join us today. But before we go to the, or talk about the SADC region, I'd like to hear your thoughts and perspective on the current Ebola outbreak uh, in the eastern central part of Africa. Now, this time around, obviously, there was a, a more concerted effort to tackle the disease. We saw uh, partners coming together. We saw uh, the emergence of a vaccine. But uh, on the 24th of July, we saw the, the WHO declaring the outbreak over. And just eight days later, there was a 10th ten, a outbreak was declared once again. Just speak to the, the, the issues around surveillance and strengthening capacity, especially for the frontline workers themselves. Um, thank you very much, Esther, for having me on the program today. Uh, as you've rightly said, um, in the African continent, we see a lot of movement of people from one country to the other. Sometimes let's not even talk about cross-border movement of people. Let's even focus on internal migration of people from labor sending communities or rural communities to urban communities to look for employment, to do trade and uh, to market certain goods and services. And we see that this situation, it's not just about movement of people, I mean, movement of goods and uh, uh, from one place to the other, but it's also, it also means movement of people that are meant to, for employment or to sell certain products. And it also means movement of communicable diseases, uh, which ultimately um, spreads diseases. And of course, as an African continent, one of the challenges that we have is to really do disease surveillance and be able to detect some of these challenges in time and being able to control them. And as you're rightly saying, one, you, you see that at one point we declare the end of a disease like Ebola and it ultimately comes back. There are so many factors that contribute to that. Uh, in, as I said, including um, human resource capacity that we have to do disease surveillance, and also infrastructure capacity that we have, equipment that we have uh, as, uh, as African countries to be able to detect these challenges in time and be able to prevent them and sometimes control them in a way that it, they will not have a protracted challenge. But as Africa, we are also investing in ensuring that as we open up our borders, as I think you know that uh, we now have um, continental free trade area and even the regional economic communities over a long time have started integration and that meant people moving from one country to the other. And that has facilitated, as I said, movement of diseases. But we are also working towards saying that as we facilitate movement of goods from one place to the other, uh, for trade and for marketing, and as people move to look for employment, how do we also strengthen our capacity to ensure that we have strong disease surveillance as well as uh, control uh, emergence of diseases? You may be aware the African continent also had, has established the uh, continental uh, disease, uh, CDC, uh, which is actually uh, focusing on control of uh, diseases and tackling such challenges uh, on the continent. So we are taking the right direction as we are talking about strengthening the economies of the African continent and improving intercontinental trade. We also want to protect the public health uh, of the people, of the populations of the continent. Achimwe, just one last point on the Ebola outbreak. Now, the WHO also came out recently, and rather the, the government of the DRC came out later to talk about uh, how some areas, especially in the remote areas, are now very difficult to reach. Areas that are have, uh, have recorded cases of the Ebola outbreak are now difficult to reach because of the fighting between armed groups. Now, I see that as a, a new challenge. What is your perspective in terms of how uh, the government can tackle that? 
Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, on that, in terms of far to rich areas and um, uh, the government having challenges as well as WHO because of uh, the uh, current um, instabilities in those uh, particular areas. Um, well, from my perspective, from my personal perspective, is that in those areas, probably what we need to do is to strengthen the capacities uh, of those particular areas, because there are people in those particular areas, and those people need services. And uh, the best way of providing services to those people is to be able to have facilities and strengthen the capacity of the existing populations, um, existing uh, human resources in the particular areas. And uh, if you, I think you may also be aware that some of those areas are close to other countries and borders and people are moving to those other countries, uh, moving away from the uh, areas that are not stable. Probably the, the focus, as I, would, I would say, that is to also look at cross-border, I mean, or, or movement of those people, where they are going. Can we be able to control uh, the disease from spreading from those areas to the areas where the people are going? So probably uh, that would be my personal uh, suggestion that, uh, or my opinion about what could happen in uh, tackling the challenge in those particular areas that are difficult uh, because of the instabilities, uh, because people are moving anyway from those areas to other areas and thereby facilitating the spread of the disease. Now let's talk about the SADC region. Now obviously the increased movement of people looking for a better jobs and better livelihood has also put pressure on surveillance and of course also exacerbated the uh, emergence or recurrence of communicable uh, diseases, disease outbreak, especially tuberculosis. Help us understand the extent to which this puts pressure on surveillance efforts. Well, in the Southern Africa region, um, migration has been quite um, a... Uh, I think it has facilitated um, a lot of trade as well as employment. We've seen people moving from uh, labor sending populations in various countries to countries where uh, typically there's uh, a lot of opportunity looking for trade and uh, looking for employment. And one of the areas where this has been key in the Southern Africa has been in the mining industry. Uh, mining has attracted a lot of movement from, especially mining in South Africa, for, for instance. People move from rural areas, areas where, uh, which are labor sending in South Africa, to the mining populations. And uh, equally, we've seen people moving from other countries, for instance, Lesotho, Swaziland, uh, Mozambique, moving from those countries to uh, South Africa. And what you will see is that uh, with that, um, it, the mining uh, communities have ended up growing and ex making them having a lot of pressure in terms of health services. And further to that, as I think uh, you may know, the mining, uh, mining is associated with also the spread of tuberculosis uh, because of the dust uh, that the uh, miners are exposed to, as well as uh, if you look at the conditions in which the miners work, uh, ventilation is a challenge, and where they live as well, the ventilation is a challenge. And these populations move from workplace to communities, and even between the communities where they are living when they are in the mining areas to the, to the rural areas where they come from, meaning that there's movement of disease from mining communities to the communities that are labor sending. And this has been quite a challenge for the African continent to control tuberculosis because at the end of the day, you realize that a person would move from um, uh, one community to the next and tracking that person has been very difficult. And uh, furthermore, uh, it has also meant movement of the disease uh, with these people, with the miners that move from mining communities to labor sending communities, putting pressure on the labor sending communities as well in terms of uh, public health services. So the, it has been quite a challenge. However, I think the SADC region, the Southern Africa region, has recognized this problem. And um, the SADC ministers of health in 2012 um, signed a declaration on mining, on, on TB in the mining sector, basically recognizing that this is a challenge that the region has to tackle together as a regional challenge. Because if one country moves from, um, I mean, moves on its own, we may not really end up uh, tackling the, t the problem of t tuberculosis because it means uh, people will still be moving from a country that has not strengthened its system to be able to tackle uh, tuberculosis to another country. So 
basically this is the challenge that we have in the Sadiq region. And what we are looking at now is that how do we strengthen ourselves to be able to do to control tuberculosis from moving from one country to the other, as well as control it even within the country so that we see the numbers and uh, the, 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 the Sadiq region being able to reach the target that has been set of ending tuberculosis by 2030 in the Sustainable Development Goals. I know that some specific steps are being taken by uh, NEPA to address this, uh, perhaps a new approach. Talk us through that. I, I know you, you, you outlined some new uh, strategies going forward that you will be employing to, among other things, strengthen surveillance of uh, vulnerable border zones. And uh, you've come up with one of them is at seven cross-border uh, and, com uh, and committees and also a framework for cross-border integrated services, uh, integrated disease surveillance and response. Talk us through that. Uh, Nepal Agency is working with its partners, and uh, these partners, we have a technical partner uh, who we call East Central and Southern Africa Health Community, uh, XIHC. Uh, with the support of the World Bank, uh, we are working with four countries uh, for now uh, to implement a project that we are calling uh, Southern Africa Tuberculosis and Health System Support Project. And uh, through this project, uh, what we have done is that though, though we are focusing on the four countries, we realize uh, that we cannot be able to tackle TB by just looking at the four countries. The project also has other regional public goods that, uh, re uh, that will impact the entire Southern Africa region. And as you said, uh, within the project, we have looked at disease surveillance, cross-border disease surveillance, as one of the key issues that needs to be tackled as we, um, uh, as we look at the broader issues around tuberculosis. So in the project, um, the Nepal Agency and its partners have, have uh, come up with a framework uh, for integrated disease surveillance and response. And within that framework, uh, what we have done is we have identified seven cross-border disease surveillance zones. And we chose this because by looking at really how people are moving and how busy these borders are in moving people from one country to the other, and basically focusing on the mining populations, how they are moving within the region, and uh, other populations that are vulnerable to tuberculosis. So in the disease surveillance zones, we have formed committees, uh, disease surveillance committees, that are focusing on uh, really building the capacity of cross-border uh, disease surveillance, looking at the human resources that are required to uh, conduct disease surveillance. We are training them so that they have the capacities that they require to be, to be able to conduct effective surveillance of diseases on the borders. And I think uh, one thing I should point out is that though our initial focus has been on tuberculosis, we've broadened the capacity building to look at other communicable diseases because we realized that we can't just look at tuberculosis in isolation. We really need to focus on the broader public health uh, challenges in terms of communicable diseases that move across borders. Furthermore, what we are also doing is that we are supporting the countries that are in the Southern Africa region participating in the uh, interventions that we are implementing okay. to be able to uh, strengthen their internal systems to report and respond to um, uh, emerging threats of communicable diseases that are cross-border in nature. We need to quickly take a, a short break. Uh, sorry to butt in there. We need to take a short break and we'll pick up from where we left off. Thank you for your time so far. Chimewe Chadimba, Principal Program Officer for the New Partnership for Africa's Development. Chimewe Chadimba, the Principal Program Officer for the New Partnership for Africa's Development, still with me discussing what the organization is working on on how it's working to tackle cross-border diseases. Chimewe, thank you for your time so far. I'm curious to know, these strategies that have been put together by your organization along with your partners, does that also include uh, the Africa Center for Disease Control? Yes, we are actually working with the Africa Center for Disease Control because in terms of uh, building capacities of cross-border disease surveillance zones and uh, cross-border disease surveillance committees to be able to conduct uh, disease surveillance, we really are working, on, are working with the uh, Africa CDC. Uh, to build the capacities of these uh, zones. And as, we, as I said earlier, what we have done is that we realize that we can do disease surveillance, but if the uh, infrastructure capacity is not available, uh, we really have not done much. So we have linked the establishment of these surveillance zones and committees and building their capacities with laboratory capacity strengthening as well, so that we are able to detect, uh, diagnose properly, and 
uh, treat whatever diseases that are, um, are identified uh, in the countries where we are working in. So we have taken a holistic approach that looks at um, detecting the challenges, detecting the communicable diseases, and uh, being able to properly diagnose them and treat them uh, with the view that we don't uh, they don't spread out in the communities where the migrating populations are moving between one country to the other. Now, Chima, now while all of these are uh, obviously a, a good step uh, in the right direction, another key question would be how sustainable are they and what is, what is your organization doing along with your partners to ensure that these efforts are going to be sustainable over time? So what we, we are really looking at is uh, ensuring that whatever we're doing is integrated in the national health systems so that the, it's not taken separately as a project that is being done for a particular period and at the end of that period then it's no longer um, there. So what we've done is that we are working with the countries that as we are building this cross-border capacity for surveillance of diseases, we also strengthen the health system. So it's a more of a holistic approach. And furthermore, we have also taken a multi-sectorial approach where we have looked at the different sectors. We realize that this is not just a health issue. It is an issue that has to do with uh, migration, which means when we, 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 when we are setting up our systems for facilitating movement of people and services between one country to the other, we also um, integrate the activities on disease surveillance. So basically what we are doing is that we are working with governments, we are working with uh, different sectors in the government, uh, migration, uh, immigration departments, uh, health departments, and since it's a mining issue as well, the mining departments, and to ensure that as they are setting up systems, we tackle the issue, we ensure that we integrate the issue of cross-border disease surveillance. And also to add on this, what the NEPAD agency is doing, we have another project that we call Move Africa. And in Move Africa, we are setting up a system for monitoring, continuous monitoring of the of movement of uh, goods or how borders are facilitating uh, movement of goods between them uh, to facilitate trade. And the question that we asked is that the movement of goods will mean movement of people. So if we are talking about movement of goods only, we may be missing the point. So we have also integrated indicators that are going to be adopted at the continental level for monitoring the movement of people and how disease surveillance is being undertaken within the borders. So basically, I think what I can say is that we are looking at a holistic approach and also integrating into national systems of health as well as immigration uh, so that this becomes the way Africa does things. We're speaking about continents, and I'm sure you know about the, the, the recent move by African countries to further integrate uh, the, the continent ec economically and, of course, the, the Continental Free Trade Agreement. That is going to see a massive, massive uh, integration of the continent in terms of how people, goods, and services uh, you know, move across the continent. And obviously, this also, that also throws up a further challenge of ensuring that those borders, that the disease transfer uh, is also closely monitored. Is this something that you're also taking into consideration, uh, especially in partnership with the African Center for Disease Control? This is definitely an area that we are looking at um, because we've started with the Southern Africa region as a starting point and we realized that we are going to learn a lot of lessons uh, in terms of integrating cross-border disease surveillance into uh, promotion of trade um, across uh, or the continent or across the Southern Africa region. So we are working with our colleagues at the African Union Commission, and as I specifically indicated, the Africa CDC, we are really working with them to ensure that whatever lessons that we learn in the Southern Africa region, they are we, are, we transfer them to the entire continent in the other regions because, as you rightly say, the adoption of the continental free trade area, it doesn't just remove barriers of trade uh, between one country to the other. I'll use an example of you, you, we started with discussing on Ebola. I'll use an example of the same Ebola situation in the West Africa region. I think we all are aware that that time, when we look at how that impacted as on trade as well, uh, between the countries that were affected then, Sierra Leone, Liberia, uh, that people were not able to move across the uh, borders and then trade was also uh, impacted uh, across the borders of those, um, of those countries. So we are working with our colleagues that whatever lessons we learn, 
from what has happened in the Southern Africa region in um, strengthening cross-border disease surveillance. We ensure that we use the same lessons and go beyond the Southern Africa uh, region to uh, strengthen the capacity of the continent that as people move for trade, as people move for employment between one country to the other, we also ensure that we ensure that this, the, the health security is an issue that uh, is at the top of the uh, agenda of the continent. Now, this suggests that, I mean, with all the, the strategies and, and all hands being on deck right now, it also suggests that a lot of investments, monetary investments, are going to need to go into this. Could you give us a sense of the kind of investments we're looking at that would need to go into these strategies? Uh, really, uh, in terms of disease surveillance, there's quite um, uh, investment that the continent needs to, to, to put in, as well as, I mean, we are working with other partners uh, that are also supporting this um, strengthening of uh, cross-border disease surveillance. As I said, what we need is there, there are gaps in human uh, resources uh, that are well capacitated to do uh, proper cross-border disease surveillance. There are equally gaps when it comes to equipment. Uh, to be able to detect these diseases. There are also gaps on the continent uh, to, uh, for, for us to, for example, at the border to quarantine. Um, if there is need for quarantining, uh, do we have the facilities to do proper quarantine um, at the borders? So uh, we're talking about quite a huge investment. In the Southern Africa region, our investment so far focusing on TB has been, with the support of the World Bank, has been about $122 million. But uh, I mean, if we are to focus for the whole continent, Continent or to look at the entire continent, it means we may have to double or triple or even more uh, to be able to really strengthen cross-border disease surveillance. But what we are saying is, if we are looking at trade, that will improve economic, uh, the economies of the continent. We are looking at uh, an area that cannot be ignored because it is human beings that conduct the trade the cross-border uh, trade between countries. And if we are looking at re removing trade barriers for the sake of economic development, then we equally have to invest in the health of the people uh, that will be able to conduct that trade, that will be able to move from one country to the other to facilitate the continental inter integration that we are talking about. So the continent, I think, I would say, is, has started taking steps, and we are ready to move into that direction. And we will really need to um, invest in the area of investing in people, because it is people that will be able to implement all these strategies that we are talking about uh, on the African continent that will facilitate economic development. Now, going forward, are you confident of a broad, across the board buy-in uh, by countries on the continent, and especially commitment? Because many times for I mean, African countries, African leaders, uh, it's, you know, they make a commitment, or they, it's, it's sometimes on paper. But when it comes to actually making that commitment, uh, that becomes a challenge. Are you worried that uh, perhaps along the line you might encounter that challenge? Uh, I would say the African countries have made the first step and uh, they've already shown commitment. And it's not just in, 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 in writing because as we are saying, uh, in the Southern Africa, we have already region. We have already started taking steps. We have already started establishing these cross-border disease surveillance zones. Countries are already sharing information. I think the countries see the need, and uh, when it comes to health, I'm sure each of the African countries puts it as a priority uh, in terms of uh, tackling diseases. So I, I, I really don't foresee any challenges and, and uh, in lack of political buy-in. And furthermore, if you look at the continental uh, free trade area, we have already started seeing countries that have signed the CFTA um, agreement. And uh, further to that, the establishment of the Africa CDC on its own, I think we can look at it as... Uh, a, a major step that the African continent has made and countries are investing in it to ensure that we really strengthen our capacities when it comes to surveillance of diseases. So I'm very optimistic. I think we've taken the right steps and African governments are very supportive and I, I foresee uh, more commitment moving forward and we are already proving it in different areas and I'm sure uh, the continent is ready to do that. Okay, thank you so much, Chinwewe, for talking to us today. We appreciate your time on the program today. Chinwewe Chadimba, the Principal Program Officer for the New Partnership for Africa's Development, talking about how African countries are tackling cross-border diseases. With that said, on today's episode of the program, many thanks for being a part of it. Remember, you can watch all previous episodes of the show on our website, at cnbcafrica.com, and you can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awuni. For myself and the team, thank you for watching, and have a wonderful evening.